Rivalry with Spud, fierce. Fierce. Back in the day, uh, it sort of borderlined into a little bit of hatred there for a while. I got a bit mad, a bit out of control. That's how you've been brought up. I always like to take the big dog on, whoever I played up against. And unfortunately for Newcastle, it was the Chief, and uh, we certainly made history. I haven't seen Spud for a while, and uh, once we go back in time and start talking about things, it gets a bit out of hand sometimes, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Chris Danks from Sporting News Australia and with thanks to Barbecues Galore, we're uniting the best of sports around the flame. Today, Paul Harrigan, Mark Carroll. Hey Chris, how you going mate? Nice yeah. to see you. Chris. Big boy. Be gentle. How's, you, man? how's things? Good to see you. That's good, you're looking good. Looking good. I'm looking pretty good. Yeah. Right, let's kick it off Chief. Yep. For you, when did the rivalry start? Mm. I think from memory it was in a city country match. But you were going out of your way and there was some pretty basic sledging let me tell you. <laughs> Not very great <laughs> stuff. I kind of realised that the next time we played, it was a similar thing, and then I suppose over the years it built from there. I've got to also agree with him regards the city versus country. Um, the weather conditions only met for straight line running, and uh, I had to take the big fella on. As the years rolled on, um, it, it got worse, and there was a, there was a zenith where it, where it got a little crazy, and, and not just between you and me, but the whole I think the two teams. Yeah. How early in the season we're we talking? You'd like you'd see uh, the seagulls coming up. You're circling it in red. How early does the preparation start for that game? The week of when we're playing, um, yeah, and particularly as you get closer to the game, in the middle of or in the height of it, you just knew that we we're going to get it on uh, for a bit of a wrestle off. Um, whether that come early in the match or later, it usually come early. If that was good, got out the road. Yeah, the build up for myself uh, on game day, um, my dad never played rugby league. He was a muse. He'd ring up, get the first shot in, just hang up. That was my dad. My mum was five foot tall. Mark, have a good game, please don't hurt anyone, because she knew it was going to be on. Yeah. And then we'd just go out there, and uh, I knew it was always going to be on. It had to be something in the first set of six, yeah. and it always happened to be like that, that way. Uh, would I change it? Never. Would I, did I circle when we are going to play? That was my highlight of the year. It takes back to that 95 game, the infamous one everyone always thinks of when they think of you two. What was going through your head just when the kickoff was about to go down? Oh, you know, I'll tell a story. I, I had this, um, I don't know what it was, like a, a torn gut muscle. So in half time, I said, Joey, do the usual routine, kick off, catch a catch, it gives it the spud, he charges it up, I say, I'm going to rattle his cage, and then I'll go off. They said, sweet, no worries. So Joe puts the ball up, kicks it up as per usual, catcher gets it, gives it the big fella blast it on, and um, I suppose the rest is history, but my goal was to rattle his cage, go off and have a break. But when I had a look at it on the video, the first thing that hit him was my chin. Yeah. So my timing was out by that much, <laughs> and uh, it didn't it didn't go down well. So I I was snoring. My goal was always to get to the 22 metre line, but I was a right arm carrier. But as on impact, I've seen him coming from the. I didn't mean to. I just turned. But the way he hit me, and he hit me with his chin, and I actually do a 360 in the air, and I hit the ground. I went over the top and said, "Mate, that's the best you got." Yeah. Um, he reckons I said something else. <laughs> anyway, then twos jump in. My captain, I'm, I'm pushing the captain away, but it's just the the height. Um, it's just, it was absolutely ridiculous. But as we speak about the, um, the badge of honour, um, he got up. After it happened, I was filthy. You know, whether, it's, whether I'd missed time or whatever, I was filthy and um, couldn't wait, you know, to, to, to play again. But I don't know, if it, I think it was later that year in the semi-final series, mm. thank heavens, you missed time, yeah. right? It was great, it was great. Because <laughs> I was going, yes, I'm taking the ball up. The big fella comes in, hits me straight in the hip with his melon. Yeah. And then he, he, he staggers back, hits Correct. the ground. And then, because he, he, he's, you know, he's so built or hardwired that way, he gets back up as soon as he can. He takes about two steps forward, and dead set, <laughs> he falls. His head falls into the turf. And then the third time, there's three divots. There was eight sand boys that had to run on the field of divots. Up. I was just going, yes, how good is that? Jump back to the '97 Grand Final for a bit. Mm -hmm. How good did it feel to actually finally get one over Spot again? It felt pretty good. Yeah. Um, I mean, we haven't. As I said, I think it was about 11 games in a row that, that defeated us. Those guys were so sure they were going to win. I remember during the week, one of the boys, I don't know if it was Hopper or someone, was going to donate their ring to someone else who didn't play. And, you know, it was a foregone conclusion. And I understand why. As I said, it's been years since we beat them. So, yes, the answer is yes. It was great to, to win. Happy for you to reminisce on 97? No, can we move on? <laughs> Next question. You roomed together in 95. Yeah, that was... Um, I thought it was a G up. I mean, we got in the camp. I went to um, the manager back then saying, you're freaking kidding, are you? We're arch enemies. Um, I'm hating him, he's hating me. And there we were sleeping about a foot away from each <laughs> other. So it was really weird coming from arch enemies and here we are, eh, stuck together. And um, 
Unfortunately, yeah. it didn't work. We got pumped three we got, <laughs> we got pumped a lot. Has it helped you guys kind of become mates afterwards now that you, you've had to room with each other, you've known? No, it took a while still after that. Yeah. I, think, I think we, we, we had still a lot of we had a lot of fighting after that yeah. how many times we got off the ground i don't know how we got up but it's just in in, in itself to get up get up don't let your mum and dad down let, let, let your you know, your family down get off the ground i just think um i, was, I used to ring him up to make sure he was okay and he's done the same thing to me you earn respect yeah and uh you shake someone's hand you don't offer it too often unless they've earned it so mm. i think we earned it big fella i think we did Crappy. yeah, yeah. All right, time to bring the heat. How's the Ziggy go, big fella? Good. Mate, On she's fire. the best. Holds its heat really well. Nice. What do you guys reckon? Do you consider yourself barbecue barons? Oh, I can't cook. I, uh, I like eating. Yeah. Uh, but cook, nah, no good. Not about self, mate. You know, I, I'm a terror on the barbecue. Yeah, and the wife loves it because that's half the work gone outside. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I like doing uh, seafood on these hundred lot of salmon. It's great. That's a cracking barbecue. Yeah. We've got belt under here, mate. Jeez, I'll tell you, we've got some massive heat. We've uh, hit the We're very lucky. So we're just sitting right at about 260. So we've got some some 16 hour sous vide ribs. So usually it'd take you know <laughs> eight nine hours to do them. Essentially, all you have to do is head of sous vide, chuck them on 260, about five seven minutes oh, either yeah. side. Done. Let's give them a quick check now. Oh, sensational! Look at this. that, mate. That looks gross. If you could dead set make that into a cologne. <laughs> <laughs> so what about do you guys entertain a fair bit at home? You know, we do. We we um, we barbecue a lot, and particularly, you know, it's spring and summertime. You know, oh, it's yeah. a better way to wrap up a day yeah. than to get the the, the barbie cracking. And you know, with my family, as everyone's getting older and they're living out of home, um, I've only got to mention the word "guys who've got a barbie on," and mate, they all come back. So it's great. Good thing about this one: uh, first starts first time every time. I've always had that problem. Like you know, it doesn't start. Gas is going. Yep. Stress level. This one, beautiful. Three burner. So that's a Ziggy guarantee. First time, every time. That's right. the motto. Enough small talk, big fella. Let's Beautiful. get into it. Time to plate up. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Oh. Woohoo! It's good to get everyone back together, having a bit of a chat. Any uh, any final words? Well, I just think it's wonderful in sport and in life. It's not where you start that counts. It's where you finish. And we finished up being great mates. We've made a legacy, and I'm um, just proud to spare the moment with him, and uh, we'll always be mates from now on. All right, uh, barbecuing better with bargies galore. Let's let's see how well I've done. Are you let's do it. I reckon, boys? All right, I'll tell you. I can't anyway, cheers. Well, wouldn't want to be that first rib. It won't last long with you, big fella. <laughs> <laughs> Crappy.